Simon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have been working together with smallholders in Thailand in the last four years. They are the first independent smallholders which have been just recently certified. So smallholders, all of them, or some of them, you have, been, you have seen yesterday morning when they were rewarded their, their certificates from RSPO as being the first independent smallholders globally certified. They are certified since October this year, 2012. There are 412 independent smallholders which, we grew, which are grouped in four, different, in four different groups. They have an annual production area of about, or an production area of 2,700 hectares and producing about 50,000 tons of FFB per year. How was the situation before certification or when we started there? All those independent, Thailand is mainly based, or the supply base in Thailand is mainly based on smallholders. 80% of the production is coming from them, only about 20% from plantations. Therefore, yes, those independent smallholders are surrounded by several mills and ramps or collecting points where they can freely choose to deliver. There are no scheme smallholders in Thailand, so smallholders don't want to sign any contracts with the mills. There's, and in the end, there's no loyalty and trust among the mills and smallholders. And overall, we can state that the government extension services don't really work. So when we started there, like the mills complained about the smallholders all the time, saying, oh, they never stick to agreements, they deliver bad quality, they don't regularly deliver to our mills, they never pay back for credits, and a long list of complaints followed. And they, my impression is sometimes that this is very similar in your respective countries as well. However, also the smallholders complained about the mill and saying, oh, they never stick to agreements, they pay only lower prices as agreed, they are manipulating the way bridges, and a long list of complaints followed. And I think this is also yeah, quite similar in all the other countries. In those days, we have been working and discussing a lot about smallholders' models, how, what, how could we yeah, categorize smallholders, and there we are saying, oh, so smallholders we have been working with, they are independent with access to several mills, they are not willing to sign any contract, and want to stay independent. And from my understanding, this is somehow the normal case model, which we are finding all over. So what needs to change to make them certify or to support them in being, in being certified? And there, overall, to say partnership and cooperation is key. They must work together with the mills, and the mills must work together with them, and they must accept themselves as partners. So they need to build up trust among them. They need to create win-win situations. I will outline a few of them what we did, and establish partnerships. And we have been talking a lot on partnerships and cooperation throughout the last days, and this also applies for, um, for yeah, mills and smallholders. Also to say, it's not only smallholders which have to learn, but it's also the companies and the mills which partly have to change their current, where their current behavior towards smallholders, because otherwise it won't work. So how did we do? When we arrived there, I have to admit we were very European-like in telling the farmers how important certification is, that the European market is requesting it and all this. And the smallholders ask a simple question, what is the price premium? And we needed to tell them, well, we don't know, we can't tell you. And therefore we needed to accept that the independent smallholders are not primarily interested in sustainability certification. They are interested in yield improvement, they are interested in fertilizer management, they are in interested in reducing their production costs, but at least at the very beginning, not at all in certification. But we can combine those interests they are having and the mills are having, and at the end, it is, yeah, there are benefits of certification and to make this, to make this happen. We, had, we heard several presentations in the last days how we did exactly do this. I won't go into detail, um, but rather focusing on the impacts. Like, what are the impacts, what we have achieved? And we did a proper baseline back in 2009 and compared those figures from 2009 with the figures just from this year. So there's a tremendous impact on household level. 
old farmers have increased their yields. Like the average figure was before we started about 17 tons per FFB per hectare, and now 19.7 tons. And this is increasingly, or this is tremendously increasing the income of farmers. The farmers are receiving a premium price from the mill. That the mills agree to say, oh, when the farmers are delivering high quality bunches with a much higher OER than before, they are paying a little premium, but there is a premium the farmers are getting. So there's a clear win-win situation. Another win-win situation was that the milk, that the milk and plantation buying fertilizer at bulk prices paying about 20% less for their fertilizers than the farmers. And they, they are just giving the farmers at cost basis, as well as the fertilizer at cost basis to smallholders. Therefore, smallholders are having considerable, considerable savings as well. So we are coming up with the figure that the farmers are earning about 400, <coughs> sorry, 420 euro per hectare more than they did before only because of yield improvement, reducing production costs and all this, and looking at the average size yeah, of land they are holding, it's increased, the income increases by about 2,600 euro per year. This does not yet include the price premiums or the benefit for certification. So smallholders are selling their certificates via Green Palm and an off-market deal. And there it's pretty clear that, those, that this price premium must cover the additional cost of certification, surveillance costs, setting up the ICS, managing the ICS's internal control system. However, also to clearly say and to thank RSPO that RSPO paid for the audit costs via this yeah, newly established smallholders, smallholders fund. However, and there we must be very careful for all projects we will be setting up with smallholders. We need to have a careful calculation to see uh, what is the price premium being paid and does those price premiums really cover for the cost of certification. And there is also clear we need, in the end we need to make the groups as big as possible. However, there we are facing, there we are facing yeah, some challenges when it's coming to those internal control systems. This impact study or the impact I was talking about is available at the RSPO webpage for download. It's not a perfect, brilliant study, but it provides some good indications and it's also providing lessons learned and also some of the mistakes we did throughout the, or throughout the process. Additionally, there is more impact, it's not only smallholders, it's especially on the mills as well. Because when we are looking at the potential benefits of OER increase, which normally translates into direct profit or benefit for the mills, for the case of Thailand, we need to say, like, looking on the number of smallholders and, and the production, Thai smallholders are producing about 8.1 million tons of FFB per year. As the average ratio of about 15% OER, which is translated into 1.2 million tons of CPO. And if all the smallholders only increase the OER by 2%, Thailand would produce 162,000 uh, 160, tons of CPO more than they are currently doing. And there are also the figures for Malaysia and for Indonesia. And for the case of Thailand, on the production side, we would need to say, ah, there's this improvement potential which we have proven, which is there, which is 162,000 tons of CPO per year, which is translating into an, in the end, annual loss of the mills of 136 million US dollar per year. And looking at the number of mills, there are about 60 or 65. There's approximately 2 million US dollars of mills are losing of a yeah, potential increase of the OER. And what I don't understand is that the, yeah, that the mills or the millers and the companies are not tapping into this huge potential of, um, yeah, of the huge potential for increased benefit and increasing profit because they are just yeah, a little bit reluctant to do something. Because they are saying, when I start to do something about those smallholders and support them, they are still delivering to the other mill and all this. 
And there I'm wondering and questioning why the mills in one region with one supply base don't take joint action, why they don't work together to tackle these problems, and why they are not involving the government to do so. And this is, this, yeah, in economic terms, clearly this collective action problem. The question how to certify more smallholders. There are 412 certified ones in Thailand. Certified, there are more than 100,000 smallholders in Thailand, 1 million smallholders in Indonesia, and there we need to think, like, how can we further upscale and do this? There is experience available. It is possible. It is doable. And therefore, just start. And just do it and start working, start working with those smallholders. It is, as we have seen, possible. However, this requires, or requires investment especially in capacity development of farmers, that they are increasing their capacity on farm management, yield improvement, um, fertilizer management, and all those issues, not primarily on certification, but on pure farm management, what many of the smallholders yeah, deserve and desire to learn more how they better manage their plantations. We also need to have investment into internal control systems, into group management, into HCV. I think all of you pretty know, or know this quite well, that this requires a lot of money. However, from my understanding, there's money on the table. The mills, in the end, are losing money by processing those, or not tapping into this OER improvement potential. The supply chain members would be quite benefiting from yeah, also, so also, also supporting such kind of, such kind of project. So it's a little bit of a collective action problem, and everyone is waiting for the others to do something. So let's overcome this collective action problem, and let's do something jointly together in a partnership. Maybe one more word towards the bias. What we learned and what we experienced is that especially when it's coming to auditing and surveillance and all these smallholder certifications, far more costly than normal certification when it's coming to, um, when it's coming to, to certification costs per unit. Maybe Sinaya can later on um, yeah, tell a little bit more about this. And from our understanding and what we learned, the price premiums being paid must reflect those costs and provide also clear incentives for smallholders of going towards of going towards certification because otherwise they don't do it. We are not talking of tremendously high we are not talking of tremendously high price premium, but we are talking of um, yes yeah, some smaller some smaller incentive providing to them. And there I'm quite happy to announce that we or that the smallholders found such a responsible buyer which is Johnson & Johnson, which is buying those certificates from the smallholders via an off-market deal on wind palm. However, also to mention the first two mills in Thailand will be certified sometimes within the next month, hopefully, and therefore starting from 2013, there will also be CSPO from independent smallholders being available in, yeah, with different supply chain options and not only the wind palm certificates. I thank you very much for your attention.